Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of my how-to videos. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make realistic load spill on covered hoppers. Uh, I'm going to be doing a couple of these Cargill covered hoppers, which are Atherin Blue Box kits. Uh, I have eight of them that I'm going to be doing load spills for. Um, this how-to video is going to be how to model load spill. Um, just a little basics on this project. It's very simple. Um, the load spill is going to be like uh, processed soybeans. Um, Cargill does a lot of that, so I kind of did my research for that. Uh, we want to have loads that are realistic for this. Um, so basically, the idea comes to mind when you're modeling load spill, uh, you want to have uh, basically the spill on the side, but you also want to have a load actual load spill on the car itself. Um, one of the biggest things that I can see and that has been done in the past and is still done is where someone will weather a car and then they won't actually have a load spill, they'll just streak some white on the car or something and say it's a load spill. The issue is that that load spill is not just a bit of paint, it's not just a spill on the side of the car. There's something that that spill is based on how it's streaking down the sides. There's got to be something on the roof that that streak is coming from. And that's something that um, is commonly ignored when uh, these, this kind of representation of weathering is done. So I uh, put this video together to show you how to model realistic load spill. So um, it's very, very, very easy how to do this. And I'll show you with some basic uh, products that you should have around your house. Um, first, you're going to need, of course, some white glue. Uh, I use Elmer's, the 99 cent stuff you can get at Walmart, basically. That's all you need. And then you're going to need baking soda. This stuff is amazing. You can use it for just about anything. Snow, load spill. I use it all the time. And what we're going to need to do is make a, almost like a slurry with this. Okay, so getting down to the modeling, per, be, modeling basics itself. Um, I have eight of these hoppers. I'm only going to do one today. Uh, all you need to see is really one car to get an idea of what we're going to be doing, basically. Um, this one's a Cargill or TLDX 7415. Uh, it's all weathered up and it's ready to go. Uh, getting down to the slurry, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take your baking soda and a small bowl like this. Um, depending on how many cars you're doing, uh, or if you're doing one car as an experiment or something like that, then don't use too much. You really don't need much at all for this. But, um, like, right now I'm doing a whole bunch of these cars, so I'm making myself uh, a little larger quantity this time. But if you're making, if you're going to do this with a couple cars, then go ahead and make a large batch. It's best to do this all at once instead of coming back and having to make different batches of load every time. So, uh, keep that in consideration. Uh, what you'll need to do is you'll take your baking soda, you'll pour it in the bowl, uh, depending on how much you need, um, and then you're just going to simply add a little drop of water at the time because a little water goes a long way. You need it to be in a thick slurry about this thick. You can, can see the consistency there. It's pretty thick. Um, you're going to need to do that, mix it up, then you'll take a little drop of white glue, that's really all you need, you'll pour it a little bit in there, and um, you'll then mix it up if you have to, you'll most likely have to add another drop of water to the glue to dilute it, and then um, you'll mix it up, and then you'll add, um, well, if it's, with doing that, with the adding the glue and the water together, most likely it'll kind of really uh, liquidize the the uh, batch. So what you'll need to do is most likely add yeah a little more baking soda to it to thicken it. But you're looking for this kind of texture here, which you can see. And I went ahead and pre-made this um, basically, but it's very easy to do. Um, so I went ahead and pre-made this to save time, and it's ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and start working on this car. Basically, what we need to do first of all is actually make the uh, streaks of spill themselves because you can't do this after the load is on. So basically you just take your uh, brush and I have some uh, white acrylic 
which I prefer for weathering, uh, you kind of dry brush it. And what you do, you target the areas you want to put the load on, depending wherever that is. And in particular, I'm going to be putting it... Uh, I'll move it over here. On this section right here. I'll get a better shot for you so you can see it all. And right in here is where I'm going to be weathering it. So what you're going to need to do is basically just touch up the area with some white, with the white acrylic just right there. Uh, kind of fan it out. I'm targeting right here, but you can kind of fan it out to make it look like it's kind of washed out from rain. And then what you want to do is also hit this area in the hatch where most likely it spilled and then floated under the walkway onto the side. So uh, we got that in place. And then we'll go ahead and streak it down the side of the car. Uh, like so. Uh, I always target it around the uh, ribs of the car because that's usually where the load is going to uh, spill over. When it spills over, it's going to go down the uh, ribs and not just the sides of the car. So keep that in mind also. Uh, you can see where it lightened up a little. Uh, that's really good right there. So I'm going to keep that. Um, and then come back and kind of make it a little darker color by adding a heavier coating of white acrylic to the top to show uh, where it's kind of targeted. And since I want to do multiple spills on this car, go ahead and move down to here. I'll go ahead and hit this area here. Just like before, hit the hatch there where it spills, floats under the walkway. Get it just a little there, dry, uh, fan it out. And get some acrylic. Fan it down the side. Like this. Kind of gather it around the sill here and probably gather a lot there. Hit it with a heavier shade right there. Perfect. Just like that. So that's exactly what I wanted right there. That's a really good spill. Uh, so um, you don't have to worry about it because the acrylic dries very quickly. It's already dry on the roof since it's a thin coat and we won't be touching the sides anyway so it, it's okay. We can go ahead and start applying the load. Uh, what I use to apply it is simply a hobby knife. Uh, I use a number two hobby knife with a chisel blade attachment to use this. And we'll go ahead and take a mixture of our slurry get a little bit off the blade and we'll go ahead and apply a good bit of it oops uh, we'll go ahead and apply a bit to there and then we'll hit some in between these hatches right there and don't worry about it if it gets on the roof lock we'll be able to wash that off in a second so just apply that there get it in now you're going to need to uh, spread it out, kind of get it under the walkway so it blends in, Pile, start piling it up and then kind of uh, fan it out and spread it out like this. You can see I kind of try to flatten it out after a certain point. Most of the load's pretty chunky anyway so it's all uh, clumpy which is good. It makes it look a little more realistic. Uh, you can see you kind of start doing that. You kind of fan it out, uh, make it look a little easy. Uh, a little slope around the ends, so to speak. And then you start kind of tapping it out to make it look like little piles. Just like that. That's really good right there. Alright, now for in between here, between the walkway and the hatch, I use another brush, this smaller uh, brush, and then I pat the load down uh, to get in between there. Pat it down, and then I add just a little more to the top, just right on top of it. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and move down to this area right here. 
I'm going to do this one real quick. Making it a little smaller, not as large as the one previously. Kind of smooth this out just a little more. Get it blended in. Alright, that's pretty good. Uh, just a little smaller than the other one. Do the same as before. Put it in between the hatch and the walkway. Get a little in there. Pat it down with the brush. And then pile another little chunk on top. Like that. And then we'll work, our, work it a little so that it looks a little clumpier. And right there is good. Okay, so that's basically it. You can see it looks uh, pretty unrealistic at this point in time because it looks like it still looks like a slurry. Well, we're going to fix that now. Here's where the load really comes to life. Uh, looks realistic. Uh, we'll go ahead and take some more of our baking soda, and I'll just take the, the tips of my fingers and get a little baking soda and then start sprinkling it on top of the wet slurry like this get it in between I'll use just a little more right there and this the baking soda basically glues itself down with the slurry because it just sucks up the moisture and it's since, it, since it's glued down, uh, it'll hold in place. We'll just brush off the roof walk real carefully with another fine, finer tip brush, more softer. Uh, we'll get some of this off here. Concentrate on the load. And slightly brush it off. So you can see by doing that, it made it look a little more realistic. It looks a little clumpier, just like the real thing. So I'm really happy with that. That looks really good. And after it's in place, just to ensure that it doesn't crumble off or anything, what you'll need to do is once it's dry, wait about maybe three or four hours till it's completely set in place. And then take either dull coat or clear coat and spray over it just gently and it'll seal it in place. And I'll, I'll do that later on. So I'll go ahead and get a move the camera so you can get a better look at this. And there it is. Move this out of the way. There we go. Now you can get a better look at it. And there you have it. Load spill. Very, very realistic load spill. So you can practice this technique on your own. Uh, like I said, when you do this, I recommend that you do it with several cars if you're planning to. Uh, you can do one, but uh, then it would mean that you'd probably have to come back and make uh, another batch of this stuff like if you decide you like it you would come back so I recommend that you do a couple cars with one batch it saves you a lot of time and effort so but that's basically it you can see how realistic that looks it looks awesome so I hope you guys enjoyed this little how-to uh, try it on your own if you like it have any questions uh, feel free to contact me by leaving a comment uh, below hope you guys enjoyed